harassment lawsuit. That civil lawsuit filed earlier this week in L.A. Superior Court claims that Lizzo pressured the dancers to engage with nude performers at a club in Amsterdam and shamed one of them for her weight gain before firing her. I do want to talk more about this topic that is making the rounds on social media. Christopher Melcher, a celebrity attorney and legal analyst, joins us live to discuss the situation. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Thanks, Josh, for having me. Of course. So first off, kind of break down some of these allegations against Lizzo because they are quite disturbing and there's a lot of them. So there's three plaintiffs who have sued Lizzo and her production company, and these were contractors, although Lizzo has referred to them as employees, and so there was a business relationship between the two, and the most disturbing or serious allegations that are being made is that during this uh, relationship that they had with Lizzo, that they were invited uh, while in Amsterdam to go to a club that, um, you know, where explicit things were happening at this club, and that this was unwelcome, it was unwanted, they felt uncomfortable, but they also felt that they couldn't say no because they would fall out of her favor. So they went ahead and um, things happened at that club that made them upset and so they're claiming sexual harassment that they were in a put into a hostile work environment in this situation that again was unwelcome to them that's what their claim is they're also saying that the work conditions were very harsh that lizzo was exacting and made you know them re-rehearse one time for 12 hours straight and then uh one of the uh, plaintiffs is claiming that she was shamed about her body image by uh, Lizzo. And those are the claims that are being made, basically uh, workplace related claims. And what did you think of Lizzo's response? We talked a little bit about that where she said she's quote, not the villain. She put out a fairly lengthy statement a few days after the allegations were made public. She posted that on her Twitter page. What do you think about that response overall, especially because she says she normally doesn't respond to things like this, but she felt she needed to because it's making the rounds all over social media and on various news outlets. I'm glad that she responded. I'm not a fan of what she wrote. Uh, it was very generic. There was a denial. There was a statement in there that these plaintiffs were not performing well or maybe had done some misappropriate things themselves and that's why they were terminated uh, but she didn't give any specifics so she kind of made it about herself about how hurtful this was to her and um, you know rather than, than just really addressing the allegations head-on so I kind of felt that it was weak or that it was missing something she also acknowledged that uh, these were employees of hers which I was surprised that she would make that admission rather than just say that they were contractors because although there's duties that we have to con our contractors, those, those are less than employees. And then also that um, she was talking about that she's an exacting producer, uh, which is her right, and that this is very important to her, but also that kind of fed into the workplace conditions allegations that was made. So I, I'm not a fan of that statement. I think it could have been crafted better. And when news broke of this a few days ago, it picked up steam pretty quickly. And many people on social media, of course, say Lizzo's canceled. Others are coming to her defense. Did you think it would blow up to this level when you first heard the news? I'm surprised about the attention that this story has received. Uh, the, the thing is, is that Lizzo has placed herself out there as being somebody very positive and proud of who she is. And so I think any time an allegation is made against somebody who is projecting themselves in, in such a way that, um, you know, they, they, they can be canceled, that they can be questioned to saying, was this genuine to begin with or was it a front? We saw that with Ellen DeGeneres, somebody who also put herself out there as being very positive, but then a lot of allegations of behind the scenes nastiness came out and that was really the end of her show. So I think that's the, it was that jarring, unexpected, this is not what we figured Lizzo was about, is what got traction for this story. And you're obviously not representing Lizzo in this case in any way. You're not representing her backup dancers, none of that. But what would you advise her to be doing right now if you were her attorney? Should she be staying silent or should she be posting statements all over social media? Lizzo should have got out there ahead of this story because she was 
not blindsided by it. She would have known about these allegations through the employment process uh, that's necessary to make this claim. So I would imagine months ago she knew about this. And what I would have hoped that she would have done is start gathering evidence to establish whether uh, these folks really wanted to go to these clubs. Maybe there's emails or text messages organizing it or saying that they had a fun time afterwards. Maybe there's audio, video, or images of them there, you know, clearly enjoying themselves. This type of evidence, if it exists, could have been presented last week before the story broke or right ready to go when the story came out. There was a video of one of the plaintiffs in April of 2023 praising Lizzo and, and singing her praises, saying that she's been a mentor, that she's her queen, that she enjoyed doing this tour with her. And that was after all of these incidents allegedly occurred. So that, she should have led with that. That got leaked a day later, that she should have led with that video and, and that it is really going to be difficult for the plaintiff to explain why she was singing her praises in April and now suing her in August. Very interesting, though, for sure. So this is a civil suit, I believe. Is it possible anywhere down the line, any of the allegations you've heard, anything that could potentially lead to a criminal case, criminal charges, anything standing out as far as that goes? Not at all. I mean, some of these other allegations that we've heard, um, you know, about other celebrities like Danny Masterson or stuff like that, this is in no way similar to that. There's no allegation being made that Lizzo did anything directly to these plaintiffs or anyone else in a way that was, you know, touching them or harming them directly. This is a workplace um, misconduct claim, something that they felt uncomfortable in the workplace, so it's purely civil damages thing. There's, there's no indication of any criminal conduct by Lizzo. All right. Do you think this is going to kind of escalate from here? Do you think it's peaked? What do you think is, is next in all of this? Well, we've already heard some people come out and support these plaintiffs and saying that they had also worked for Lizzo and felt that she was mean to them. So this is really harmful to her. But I kind of think that that information has already come out there. And the takeaway for Lizzo should be, you know, these are not your friends. You know, your employees and contractors are professionals that you have a business relationship with. And if you want to go to clubs, take your friends to clubs. Don't take your, your employees and contractors to clubs in Amsterdam. My last question for you here, what role does social media play in all of this? Because you know you have folks who take each and every side, you have social media police who think they know everything. What role does social media play in a situation like this as this is going through the court system? Well, the people are, are, are tried and convicted in social media before they ever get to court. And so celebrities or other high-profile individuals have realized that, and they go ahead and get ahead of these stories by developing the information that's needed to defend themselves and either preemptively putting that out there uh, you know, to their communities uh, or be ready to pounce on a story once it's out there. So I think she's a little bit behind the curve on this. And um, that's the power of social media is that we can spread information and our opinions very quickly on things. Now, sometimes that gets um, out of control because a lot of folks read headlines or read the, um, the initial part of the post and they don't go and do the detailed dig. And if they don't like Lizzo, then of course they're gonna say, oh, this is validates everything I felt about her. So my, my sense is, is that because information moves so quick, if something like this comes out, uh, is to get ahead of it. And that's the advice that I'm giving to my clients is, is to be ready and don't wait until a year or two from now to get to court. All right, Christopher Melcher there, legal expert. We appreciate you taking the time to join us here. Anything you want to add about this case before I let you go? Well, I think the, the big takeaway for any of us who are business owners um, is that we have to be careful, that we have obligations to our employees. We have obligations to independent contractors to provide a safe working environment, and that uh, sometimes those lines can get crossed where we feel you know friendship with, with folks. But um, this is a good example for, for all of us that are business owners that we have to maintain those boundaries, and otherwise the claims are going to be made. All right, Christopher, thanks again for taking the time to be here. Thanks, Josh.